need this so we know where to place them together. So as they join right at that spot, just put a dot on each one of the binding. So your starting edge tail and your ending tail. And you've got the two dots on each one. So when I pull them apart and open them up, you can see there's a blue dot on that one and there's a blue dot on this one. So then what we do with the open up, okay, I'll turn this back around again for you. We're going to open it up and we can see our blue dot here. And then we've got the blue dot. And what we need to do is meet the two blue dots together. So a little trick I use is I get a pin. I come from the inside of this binding straight through the blue dot and into this one, into that blue dot. Then what you have to do is bunch up your quilt a bit so you've got a bit more um, of the binding. Laying it flat. Okay. And laying this one flat. And the pin has gone through both of the dots. And I'm going to give it a pin. So you've got a, a middle point where the two dots met and the pin. So that's where we need... That's where it's going to lay flat and we just need to sew from where, now this doesn't matter what angle these two pieces are sitting. So you can manoeuvre them, it doesn't matter if they're not right angles or not. Just get them flat, okay. And what you need to do is sew from this corner where this material meets the bottom material, so the top one meets the bottom in that corner and you need to sew across to where they meet on this edge. Okay, now you can pin um, and then you take it and you just put it under your machine. Now the quilt, you will have to bunch the quilt up a little bit, okay, so it gets it nice and flat. And then you just sew straight across. And if I move my sample around, you'll see that I've done it on this one here. So you can actually see where I've got the blue dot there and the blue dot on this side and they've met. I've laid them flat. I've sewn from where they meet, so where the, the two pieces of material meet. And then I've trimmed it off with my quarter inch. Then when you pull out the quilt and you fold, it will sit perfectly flat for your binding. And then you can sew straight down and it will be flat and there will be no puckers or extra material. Now, the reason we do join with all our binding on a diagonal. It's so the seams, so you've got the seam when you turn it through, one seam's here and one seam's here. That's so there's not so much bulkiness. If we had the seam in a direct line, we'd have two seams on top of each other, then we're going to fold it over and to the back, and we're gonna have four seams all in one spot. So it's nice to have the angle so we haven't got the bulkiness of the seams. So then when you get to um, finishing it, going all the way around, we've turned our corners through and on the back, when you flip it over, so on the back, just grab a needle and thread, get one of those for you. Okay, and on your needle, um, the length of cotton should be about... 18 inches. Don't go too, don't get long lengths of cotton because if you use too much cotton, as you're going through the layers, the cotton will actually, um, it'll wear and then it'll break. Okay, so not too long a one. Put your knot, and I am doing this as a sample, so this is not a very long piece of cotton. And I'm using a colour that is um, will show in the video, um, but when you're doing it yourself, you would use a contrasting colour that matches your binding or your backing. Put your knot in, so you've got it in the actual seam allowance, and bring it through. Fold over your binding, and then you should be able to slip stitch, and you gather up one or two threads of the backing fabric and then place it through the fold of the binding and then come through. 
and then you continue around and that will be a blind stitch all the way around and give your quilt a really nice finish.